Welcome back to our Tennis Elbow 4 Beginner's Guide series. In our first video, we covered your first launch of the game, diving into mods, settings and difficulty. If you missed it, go check it out. Today we are all about gameplay basics. I will walk you through how to play Tennis Elbow 4, covering aiming, shot types, holding the shot button, danger zones, movement, serving and returning serves. Plus, I will share some secret shot types that are not listed in the game, so stick around. Before we dive in, a couple of quick disclaimers. First, I am not a pro in this game, just a fellow newbie with about 80 hours in the game. Second, I will show you my controller overlay so you can follow along with what I am actually doing. But remember, this is my custom control scheme, which you can see right now on the screen. Alright, let's get into it and learn how to play Tennis Elbow 4. First up, let's talk about aiming. Aiming here is different from any other tennis sim. Usually in other games, you aim left, right, plus long and short with your left stick. While the difficulty and the nuances might vary between games, you always get to choose the direction and length of your shot with the left stick. But Tennis Elbow 4 does it differently. You only get to choose left and right directions with your shot by using left stick. If you pay attention to the aiming helper available in the game, the aiming left or right makes the shot follow a certain radius. Think of it like a half circle with your player at the center. The aiming reticle moves along the edge of that circle in the direction you hold. Aiming is also time based in Tennis Elbow 4. If you start holding a direction too early, your shot will go way out. But if you release left stick too soon, the ball will go to the middle of the court. So when should you start pressing the direction? Well, it depends on the speed of the ball and your position. You will get the hang of it as you continue playing, naturally developing habits and muscle memory. I usually start holding a direction about one second before the ball hits my racket when playing from the baseline. I'm saying from the baseline because it's important to note that the aiming reticle moves faster the closer you are to the net. And so playing from the baseline requires longer aiming to get the ball close to the line, while volleying close to the net needs just a split second press to either side. Another unique aspect of Tennis Elbow 4 is how you hold and release the shot button. Most tennis games have you release the shot button right before the ball hits the racket, for optimal power and precision. Topspin does that, and so do AO Tennis 2 or Full Ace Simulator. In Tennis Elbow 4, you actually have to keep holding the shot button, which is very confusing at the beginning. If you release the shot button before the shot is made, it will become a safe default shot to the center of the court. And you don't want to do that unless you are in a crisis situation. This is because such a shot is short, slow, it's played high and leaves you vulnerable to your opponent's attacks. Holding the shot button prepares your player for the shot, which is also crucial in Tennis Elbow 4. You actually want to start holding the shot key as soon as you are close to where the ball will bounce. So you may be wondering what are the benefits of holding the shot button longer. There are two main advantages. First one is that the longer you prepare the shot, the more accurate it becomes. You can see that with the aiming preview. The reticle gets smaller the longer you hold the button. And secondly, shot length improves also with longer preparation. We will discuss shot types later in this guide so it will become more clear. But for now, understand that short shot types like short accelerations or drop shots land closer to the net the longer you hold the shot button. And for other shots, they go farther, closer to the baseline the longer you prep them. However, holding the shot button early isn't the only factor in shot length. Your positioning plays a vital role too. When we talk about positioning in Tennis Elbow 4, it's not just about being close enough to hit the ball. Positioning here is more complex and it includes where you are relative to ball's height, where the ball hits your racket. First, let's talk about the ball's height. Ideally, you want to hit the ball at the peak of its bounce when it's neither rising nor falling. This gives you optimal power and accuracy. In the game, this position is shown as the green zone with the danger zone preview enabled. 
standing in the orange or red zone makes your shots less powerful and accurate, especially for aggressive shots called accelerations in tennis elbow 4. Additionally, you get a shot power bonus when hitting the ball at shoulder height. This bonus depends on the playstyle you choose for your player. Now, let's discuss ball and racket positioning. You want to hit the ball in the middle of your racket for the optimal power and control. Aim to hit the ball on the side of your body, just like the natural shot motion is on a real tennis court. Hitting shots when the ball is too close to your body is definitely not ideal, neither in the game nor in real life. The same goes for reaching too far for the ball. If your player continues to have awkward shot animations, this simply means you are not getting into the right position time and time again. So try to remember these aspects of positioning, especially for accelerations, volleys and drop shots. These shot types are the most prone to error due to poor positioning. Now let's talk about the different shot types in Tennis Elbow 4. There are 9 shot types for ground strokes. First we have topspin, which is your go-to default shot. Topspin adds spin to the ball from bottom to top. It's great shot type when you are not in a perfect position to attack the ball aggressively. Topspin helps push your opponent back behind the baseline and is a safe shot to use regardless of position. Next, we have Slice, which is your defensive tool. Slice shots are slower and bounce lower. Use a slice when your opponent pushes you out of the court. It buys you time to get back in position. A well-prepped slice makes it really tough for your opponent to play an aggressive shot. I also recommend using a slice for your approach shot when you want to get to the net. It doesn't usually result in a winner, but gives you more time to get to the net and limit your opponent's angles. Slices are, by the way, the most effective on clay courts. And then we have acceleration shots. These are your most aggressive shot types in Tennis Elbow 4. They are like powerful flat shots in other tennis games. They are your high risk, high reward types of shots. You need time to prepare them, or they might hit the net or go out. You actually have a limited number of good accelerations you can use in a single rally. If you exceed your limit, your accelerations become weaker. The number of good accelerations depends on your stamina and playstyle. For instance, 100% stamina allows for 5 good accelerations in a rally. This number can go up to 8 with the power baseliner playstyle which gives you extra free good accelerations. Oh, and accelerations also tire your player more, so use them strategically. Next, normal strike and short normal strike. I find short normal strikes great for countering opponents who like going to the net. A short normal strike is a safe shot that drops low close to the net, making it hard for your opponent to play a good volley. Normal strikes are generally something between topspin and accelerations in terms of aggression. Moving on, drop shots. Drop shots are very powerful when played right in Tennis Elbow 4. I don't use them yet too much, but I have suffered a lot from them in online matches. Many online matches have no in-game helpers, so the only way to know your opponent played a drop shot is by listening to the sound and watching the shot animation. If you see a slice-like looking animation of a shot, but the shot sound is a bit softer, it's a drop shot, so sprint to the front. I recommend you use the drop shots when your opponent is scrambling in a defensive position or is far behind the baseline. The longer the distance between the opponent and the placement of your drop shot, the higher the chance of winning the point with it. And remember that the longer you prep your drop shot, the more effective it becomes as it drops closer to the net. And then we have lobs. There are defensive and aggressive lobs in this game. Defensive lobs are safer if you are on the run or don't have much time to prepare the shot. Aggressive lobs are more effective when you have time to prep them. Keep in mind that the speed of the incoming ball also affects the lob's accuracy. So if the incoming ball is way too fast, your lob might go long and out. I recommend you use lobs when your opponent is playing very close to the net. And besides these 9 ground strokes, there are also 3 additional shots which are not listed in control settings. These are Shot Slice, Slice Lob and Banana Shot. Here are the controls for each shot with my control scheme. Translate them into your controls. 
Short slice is done by pressing slice, then drop shot, and then again slice. You can play slice lob by pressing slice, defensive lob, slice. And for banana shot, you need to press normal strike, short normal strike, and top spin. This might be a little bit confusing, so let me explain. You need to press the first two inputs quickly and then hold the last button in the sequence until the shot is made, just like with other shot types. These shot types require more advanced inputs and are quite hard to pull off in a match, especially if you are just learning the game. I have tried them all a little bit and honestly I found the slice lob and banana shot to be a bit underwhelming and lack in purpose during the match. The short slice can be actually quite useful to trick your opponent into thinking that you are playing a typical slice, which is usually longer. This way you can get your opponent to misjudge their position if they don't have in-game helpers. Next, let's talk about serving in Tennis Elbow 4. It's complex but really rewarding mechanics when you get it right. To serve, press one of the three serve type buttons to start the animation. Just like with other shots, keep holding the shot button. Aiming the serve works similarly too. You don't aim for length, just the direction. Plus, you don't want to press the direction button too early. You can also press up to add slice to the serve or down for topspin. We have three different serve types in Tennis Elbow 4. First, the strong serve. This is the most powerful, but also the most risky serve type in the game. The success chance of strong serve highly depends on your power and consistency stats. For example, if your power equals your serve consistency, you have a 70% chance to serve properly with strong serve. But if your consistency is higher than power, the chance gets higher as well and vice versa. Then we have normal serve, which is easier to get in. It has 85% success chance if your power equals consistency. Naturally, this serve type is not as powerful as strong serve, but it still has quite some kick. And lastly, we have safe serve. This serve type has a 100% success rate, but is the slowest. Oh, and remember that the success rate I mentioned isn't the only factor in hitting your serve. You can still miss your serve by holding left or right for way too long. The success chance mainly affects whether the serve hits the net or goes way too long. And if you want to try serve and volley, release the serve and direction buttons a little bit before your player hits the ball. Then quickly press up with the left stick. This makes your player start running towards the net sooner, increasing your chances of getting there ASAP. I wish we actually had a rush to the net button instead of this complicated input for serve and volley. It's a bit awkward and can negatively impact your serve accuracy if you don't get it right. So if you want to use it effectively during the match, I recommend you go to the service training. For serve and volley, I also recommend you try using slower serves to give yourself more time to get to the net before your opponent returns the ball. So how do you serve well in this game? To consistently make good serves in Tennis Elbow 4, you need a lot of practice. I recommend sticking with one player at a time to get the hang of their serving animation. Different players throw the ball at different heights, affecting the timing of your aim. The devil is in the minor timing differences in Tennis Elbow 4, so you want some consistency in your gameplay. With practice, you will learn when exactly to start pressing either direction. From my experience, it's usually around the time the ball reaches the peak of the throw or when it's already falling down, depending on the animation. You can press up to add slice spin to the serve or down for a top spin effect. You can also do a 90 degree swing with the left stick by first pushing the stick up or down and then pushing it to either direction to give the ball a nice spin. There's also the twisting serve, which is done by first pushing the left stick down, then quickly up and twisting it to either left or right. You can also do it in the reversed order, right? Like with up first, then down, and lastly direction. Keep in mind that the slower the surf type, the easier it becomes to play spinning and twisting surf types properly. I recommend first practicing surfs without adding spins. Try to consistently aim close to the line with strong or normal surf. Then, as you get comfortable with timing, 
start adding spins to your serves. Overall, I like using a strong serve straight down the T-line. I like spinning and curling normal serves to throw my opponent off balance. Placing a wide slice serve with a normal serve can be just as impactful as a strong serve down the T-line. The main point in serving well is to keep your opponent on their toes. Even the strongest serve with great accuracy can be well returned if it's predictable. Lastly, let's talk about returning the serve. This is the part I struggle with the most, especially in online matches. So I guess many of you will have problems with returns as well. Generally, try to not guess the direction of the serve. Instead, work on reacting to ball's direction as soon as possible. When you're just starting, use all the in-game helpers to return the serve properly. You are still learning the mechanics and haven't developed muscle memory of inputs required in this game, so make the practice easier at the start. Look at the danger zone and start moving towards the ball as soon as you can. Then when you are close to where the ball will bounce, start holding the shot button and aiming for the return. As you get better, you can start disabling some in-game helpers to learn returning the ball by observing the serve's direction. Oh, and don't try to return the serves with accelerations, unless the serve is particularly easy or you are in position early enough to prep an acceleration. Top spin, slice or normal strikes are great options for returning the ball consistently, especially on the first serve. There's also an alternative return method. If you're struggling with your reaction time to return the serves, try holding the shot button when the opponent is about to serve. Your player will start leaning towards the direction of the serve as soon as the ball is hit by the racket. This can be your alternative way of figuring out which way the ball will go. But bear in mind that you cannot rely on just continuing to hold the shot button and auto positioning for returns on higher difficulty levels. This is because auto positioning in Tennis Elbow 4 is way slower than manual movement. So you won't reach the ball this way on time in online matches or while playing CPU at higher difficulties. However, this might help you at low difficulty levels when serves aren't as demanding and you're still learning the controls in Tennis Elbow 4. Plus, if you want to use this method as just directional hint, then go for it. You can release shot button when your player leans towards the serve direction and manually run towards the ball at normal running speed. So that's what I got for you in this gameplay basics tennis elbow 4 guide. I hope the information in this video helps you get the hang of the gameplay mechanics in this awesome tennis simulator. As you probably noticed, a lot of things work differently than in other tennis games. This definitely makes the game less approachable at first, but once you click with the gameplay, Tennis Elbow 4 becomes an addictive, unique and rewarding tennis simulator experience, so I think it's worth you giving it a proper shot. In the next video in this series, I am planning to jump into player statistics and builds. We will also talk about World Tour mode and integration with Tennis Elbow Manager 2, which is quite awesome feature. If you enjoyed this video, then consider dropping a like to help this guide reach more players. And if you want to see more content from me in the future, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. Anyway, that's all from me in this video. Thanks for your time and I'll see you in the next one.